What about relationship between pure strategies in an extensive form game and payoffs or expected utilities? So how can we calculate expected utilities once we're given a strategy profile? So this is what we're gonna do in this episode. So uh, let's take some arbitrary pure strategy profile, a small s, which is an element of capital S. And don't forget capital S is the Cartesian product of all the player's strategy spaces, including the nature, all right? In the example I, I mean, we, are, we were talking about, the nature doesn't move, and so therefore you can ignore it. But in general, you can incorporate nature as well. Well, a strategy profile is going to induce an outcome, and we denote this uh, O superscript small s. All right, so it's the outcome function uh, after strategy profile S, pure strategy profile S. Well, what is it? Well, OS is in fact a probability distribution over terminal histories, okay? And O superscript S Z is the probability that terminal history Z is going to occur under the strategy profile S. All right, so this is how we read OSZ. Well, if nature does not move, obviously that means, and everybody's playing pure strategy, meaning they just play, choose just one strategy. Uh, they don't mix, they don't randomize. And so OSZ must be one for some unique uh, 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 terminal history. And then for all the other histories, OSZ must be equal to zero, okay? So, meaning expected utility calculations are going to be pretty straightforward if players are, if all the players are playing pure strategies and if nature is not included in the game. Well, what is the expected utility? Well, simple. The expected utility of playing strategy profile S but don't forget, uh, we cannot calculate a player's expected utility without knowing the other's strategies, all right? So we need the strategy profile to calculate each player's expected utility. Well, how do we do that? Well, it's basically the expected utility function. We sum over all uh, terminal histories, meaning all those payoffs. Uh, and what we do, we calculate uh, the... I'm sorry, we multiply the utility of getting, uh, of, of player I is going to get after terminal history Z, multiply it by the probability that this history Z is going to occur under S. All right, and then we do this multiplication for each terminal history and sum them up. That's how we calculate the expected utility. Well, it is important to understand this construction under pure strategies because things are easier. If you don't get it now, when we go for the mixed strategies, trust me, things are going to be uglier. So spend some time to understand this formulation. All right, here I have two very simple examples. What if my strategy profile is, you know, player one is playing LBC and player two is playing XW, meaning player one playing L here, all right? It's always easier to put arrows on if you have the game tree and then B here and obviously here and, and what else? C here, all right? Good. Uh, what about player two? Player two is playing X here and W here. Okay, well then the question is, what is the expected payoff of, by the way, um, throughout this course, um, well, yes, I used, um, a capital U here, and this small u is the von Neumann Morgenstern utility, and this capital U is the expected utility. In fact, they're two different things. But I'm going to abuse the notation just for simplification because I don't want to deal with small u, capital U, again and again, here and there. So for that reason, I will always use small u. All right, uh, but hopefully you will understand from the history is, is whether I'm talking about expected utility or von Neumann Morgenstern utility, okay? Well, now let's calculate the expected utility for player one and then player two of playing strategy S. Well, that's simple, uh, but let me do this calculation at least once in detail. So for example, how do I calculate U1S? Let me erase this. Well, 
What I need is, remember, I'm going to write this calculation. Uh, so for each history, so for example, the history is LXB. In this case, he's going to get payoff 4. This is UZ. Uh, Z, uh, LXB, times what is the probability that this history is going to occur according to this strategy profile? Well, remember, according to this strategy profile, player one will play L for sure, two will play X for sure, and he will play, player one will play B for sure. So therefore, the likelihood that they're going to end up here is one. So therefore, four times one. Plus, well, if, if the probability that this history will occur is one, the probability that all the other histories will occur is zero, right? So therefore, I can just ignore the rest and say, well, his expected utility is four. But let me just nevertheless do it, at least for a few uh, other histories. For example, if the history is LXF, uh, player one is going to get minus one. Question is, what is the likelihood that he will end up minus one? Well, it's zero. Why? Well, because F will never be played by player one according to these strategies. Remember, so the likelihood of uh, this history will, will be realized is zero. Plus, what about LYB? Well, if player, I'm sorry, if LYB is the history, again, player one is going to get minus one. But what is the likelihood of this uh, uh, history occurring? Well, zero. Why? Well, because player two will never play Y according to his stra her strategies. So therefore, this is times zero. And so on. As I said, uh, given that one history will be realized with probability one, all the other histories will occur with probability zero. So therefore, player one's expected payoff is nothing but four. So this is four. What about player two? Well, simple. It's two. Okay, as simple as this. Well, let's talk about very quickly about the second example. So what if player one plays RBD, all right? And then player two plays the pure strategy YW. Well, again, if you put arrows, things are gonna be simpler, but uh, basically all I have to look at is R and D, right? R and D, uh, but what about player two? Is it W or Z? Well, he's playing W, so therefore RWD is going to be the realized history in this game. So therefore player one is going to get five payoff, player two is going to get zero payoff. So this is how we relate each strategy profile uh, to a payoff function. All right. Well, obviously one question is what if nature is also making a move at some point? Well, uh, that's uh, in this game too difficult because you know the game tree is too long. But I am going to give you one very simple example. So player one moves A and B. Here nature moves and nature chooses something alpha and beta, for example. Uh, with one health probability, one health probability. All right, so meaning once player A uh, uh, plays, while well, they, 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 uh, somebody is going to uh, toss a coin, and so uh, one of those things are going to happen. If this happens, well, here the game is over, zero, zero, let's say. So if this happens, player one is going to move again and choose between, I don't know, X and Y. And if this happens, well, then player two is going to move and then she's going to choose W and, and Z. And then the payoffs, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. Okay, so let's suppose this is the case. Well... What about, first of all, obviously, we have to talk about the uh, pure strategies, right? Uh, so what we need to do is uh, the strategies for player one and for player two. So for player one, the, there are two information sets or two decision nodes that he makes a decision. So therefore, one of his strategies is like AX or BX or BY or AY. So let's say... Uh, player one strategy is a X. All right. Well, what about player two? Player two strategy. She has only one decision note, so she is going to choose either W or Z. I don't know. Let's say W. Well, what about nature? Well, the nature's strategy. Uh, 
let's call it SC. Well, remember, he can't choose strategy. It's the beta function, that beta uh, alpha conditional on A and beta beta uh, I'm sorry for uh, alpha, beta here, uh, conditional on history A, and both of them are one half, one half. So therefore, his strategy is kind of one half, one half. All right, so the question is, so if this is S, S1, S2, S3, the strategy profile, what is player one's utility, expected utility out of S? Well, simple. So what we're going to do, we are going to calculate his expected payoff, meaning we will multiply 1, 2, 3, 4, and 0 with their respective probabilities and then add them up. So 1 times, what is the probability that he, this history will occur, A alpha X? Well, its probability is, well, player 1 is playing A for sure, so its probability 1 coming here, alpha which is one half, so one times one half, and x. Well, uh, player one is also playing x, so it's probability one again. So therefore, this is probability one half. So with one half probability, they're gonna end up here. What about this history, a alpha y? What is this probability? Well, player one will never play y, so this prob the likelihood of this history is zero. What about A beta W? Well, uh, remember A is going to be played by player 1 for sure, and W will be played by player 2 for sure, and beta will occur with one half probability, so therefore it's 1 times 1 half times 1. So with one half probability, this is going to occur, obviously. I mean, not obviously, I'm sorry. And then uh, A beta Z, well, player two will never play Z, so therefore it's zero probability. So one times one half times zero, so zero probability. And finally, what is the likelihood that this outcome will occur? Well, player one is, is, is not gonna play B, so it's zero probability, all right? So therefore, player one's expected payoff uh, in this game, same as uh, player two, because the payoffs are the same, is one times one half plus two times zero plus three times one half plus zero times four uh, plus zero times zero. So whatever that number is equal to. Okay, this is how we calculate the expected payoffs um, if the nature moves ever. All right, um, one thing is very, very important to keep in mind. I mean, remember, how did I calculate this likelihood occurring? Well, Here's the important understanding or sort of implicit assumption. This is a non-cooperative game theory approach, meaning players, when they play this game, choose their strategies and play those games uh, independent from one another. They cannot coordinate, they cannot cooperate. And so when we calculate, the, I'm sorry, when we try to find the probability that the history A alpha X will occur, I multiplied that player one playing A, probability of one playing A, probability that alpha occurring, one health, and then the probability that player one is going to play X here, which is one. So all those probabilities are multiplied because we assume that uh, all these strategies are independent, IID, and so we just, you know, multiply those probabilities. All right, that's a very critical thing. What if players are playing their strategies dependent on uh, others' strategies, kind of some in, in, in a weird independent way, if there's some correlation? Well, again, as I said, in a non-cooperative approach, we don't have that, all right? Players independently choose their strategies, okay?